Ayaka Sakata from the Institute of Statistical Mathematics in Japan. Uh, it is a great honor to speak to you here today. Today, uh, I'd like to talk about one of our recent, uh, recent uh, research uh, achievements. Uh, today's topic is sparse estimation, which is uh, one of the recent achievements in statistical science. And there are several kinds of mathematical formulations for this estimation problem. And uh, in our institute, we have uh, some research groups, and one of the research group is devoted to the sparse estimation problems. And we have studied sparse estimation problem using the non-convex penalty functions, which importance will be explained later. Here, I'd like to talk about what the sparse estimation is and the importance of this problem using an um, example. Okay. This image is well known in signal processing community as this is used as a test data to check the performance of the proposed method. And this figure consists of 128 times 128 times pixels. For the grayscale image, for, for simplicity here, I consider the grayscale image. Uh, we can express uh, this image uh, using set of numbers. Computationally, this kind of figures are uh, represented uh, by the numbers. For instance, if we assign zero to black and 255 to white, which is the two to the power of a is minus one, so this is one by expression, we can express each pixels by numbers considering the shading of each pixel. So as a result, this image can be represented by the set of numbers like this. So this is the matrix. Yes, this, so matrix up here is linear algebra and the linear algebra is quite important in statistical science. Okay. We can apply Fourier expansion to any images. Uh, in case of this image consists of 128 squared pixels. Uh, we can express this image using the same number of the wave patterns as the summation of them. So these wave patterns have different wavelengths and directions. This uh, procedure is known as Fourier expansion and we can apply this process to any images. And the dependency on the image appear in the coefficient, for instance, a1, n2, a3, a4, and so on. And this coefficient represents the contribution of each wave patterns to express the images. Of course, this value of the components depends on the image, what we consider. But there is an um, interesting and universal properties in this coefficient. This figure shows the distribution of coefficients. Here, horizontal axis is the label of Fourier component, and here I ordered the number of Fourier component to be the decreasing order of the components in the absolute value. And the vertical axis is the strength of the component. In the inset, I magnified this figure around 0 to 100. Okay. This figure means that the, some part of components have quite large contribution to express the image. But most of components are not important as they have small contribution, almost zero. This fact holds for any natural images. It is well known fact. And this is the basis for the sparse estimation. 
Here, I compare these two figures. The left figure is the original figure, namely, it consists of all our Fourier components. But in the left figure, we only use 5,000 terms of the Fourier component. So we only use 30% of the Fourier components. Comparing these two figures, they are almost the same. The uh, resolution of light figure is slightly lower than the original image, but we can identify what is drawn in this figure. So this is the basis for sparse estimation. For a precise description, we need all of the components. But for instance, in this case, 30% of times would be sufficient for approximation of the image description. So we introduce sparsity assumption in sparse estimation. That the assumption is that the lots of components are not important. And we ignore many terms as zero. This is a sparse estimation. Now, the sparse estimation is expected to be applied to uh, MRI scanning. So MRI scanning is a medical device like this in hospitals. And using this MRI scanning, uh, we slice our body and take picture without, no, without invasion. And we obtain these kind of figures. So these are brains. A problem of MR scanning is that it consumes uh, lots of times. So during the scanning, we need it to be fixed. And the time depends on the organs, what we would like to see. But generally, it continues from 15 minutes to 60 minutes. So patients in this MR scanning has sometimes some bad condition in their hair. So to be fixed during the scanning is a tough work for them. So this uh, problem with scanning times is expected to be resolved by introducing sparse estimation. Here we are comparing these two figures. The left one is provided by normal MRI. And right one is provided by MRI under the sparsity assumption. We know that natural images are sparse, so lots of parts are not important. So we can skip some observations that relate to the non-important part. And as a result, we achieve more faster MR scanning. So, so this is not uh, our research, but reported in this paper, uh, they achieved five times faster uh, MR scanning compared with the uh, normal MR scanning. The resulting figure has slightly lower resolution compared with the normal MR scanning. But as indicated by arrows, we can identify the existence of the cerebral aneurysm in the brain. So this right figure is sufficient for a medical decision. So this is a kind of application of sparse estimation to actual our life. Okay, now I'm studying uh, more theoretical work uh, for sparse estimation. We can imagine that if the important part, the number of important is uh, larger, we need much more observations. So this kind of uh, image, uh, in general, we term signals uh, with uh, a lot of important part is called dense signals. So dense signals require many observations. So if 
we know the more quantitative relationship between the fraction of the important information and the number of observation to be required, we can set more effective setting of observations. So we need um, some kind of statistical inference procedure. As we observe the part of the uh, components, so we need to recover all of the information from the uh, kind of segmented information uh, obtained by partial observation. This process is termed as reconstruction. For the reconstruction, we need a method from statistical inference. There are many methods for reconstructions, and one of the widely used method is L1 minimization. Here, L1 is the name of the, some mathematical functions. And in this method, the reconstruction of the image is formulated as a kind of optimization problem. When we use the L1 minimization, we can draw this kind of figure. Here, the horizontal axis is the fraction of non-zero component, and the vertical axis is the compression ratio, which means the number of measurement divided by the number of measurement required in full measurement. So if the vertical axis is smaller than one, we can achieve few measurement compared with the full observation. Now, when we use L1 minimization method, uh, we can draw this line. This line means that if we set the number of observations to be over the line, we can achieve the reconstruction of the image with fewer number of measurement. For instance, if we focus on the point 0 0.5, namely fraction of non-zero component, namely important part of the images is half. We can achieve the reconstruction of the image from 80% of measurement. So we can reduce 20% of measurement. And our finding is our finding is that if we introduce um, the convex penalty minimization method for the reconstruction, uh, we can achieve more effective uh, measurement. Here, non-convex penalty is a kind of mathematical function, but it is a little bit difficult, uh, mathematically difficult compared with the error minimization problem. But utilizing some knowledge in statistics or statistical physics, we can achieve more efficient measurement. So this line, the second line, is uh, inside of the line uh, provided by error minimization which means that the number of measurements can be reduced from the that uh, required in error minimization method. For example, if we focus on the point 0 0.5 of the fraction of non-zero component, we need 65% of measurement. So compared with the error minimization, uh, the gap is uh, 15 points. So we can reduce more uh, number we can list the number of measurements further. Okay. This result indicates that the importance of the statistical inference to improve the, some kind of technology. Okay. Now, in summary today, uh, I explained, I introduced the sparse estimation techniques and its scope is now extended to various research fields. And uh, one of the achievement, recent achievement is the reconstruction of the black hole imaging in astrophysics. Nowadays, um, having access to a large amount of data and powerful computational tools are advantageous for uh, recent machine learning technologies. But I think, of course, it is crucial uh, to understand what we can do if we have some abundant resources. But I think um, 
it is essential to conduct research in the direction that um, whether smaller model uh, can approach the performance of the larger models. This direction holds significance for the interpretability, interpretability of the statistical models. And also from an engineering point of view, the as smaller machines are directly linked to the energy conservation, so sparse estimation serves as um, approach from this point of view, I think. So the recently statistical inference uh, is mm, getting more important. So this kind of sparse, uh, the relationship between the small models and large models is also important, I think. So the combination of these two directions uh, will help uh, us to uh, how to use this kind of technology in our way of life. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Great, thank you. Absolutely fascinating. I have a couple of questions for you, but I'm not going to hesitate to ask those because I'm sure there might be some questions coming from the, coming from the floor. Yes, yeah, on. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. Uh, at the beginning, you explained this uh, uh, sparsity model really nicely using a picture and also the uh, Fourier basis, uh, which is very understandable to human and uh, why we, we, we can use a sparse model to recover the image. However, I wonder how this kind of sparsity of model coming uh, in the neural networks, for example, have, uh, have someone considered this kind of sparse uh, sparseness in terms of parameters in the neural network models. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I think the sparsity in neural network models is quite important. Uh, as you may know that um, there is a concept of degrees of freedom in statistical models. And in general, the degrees of freedom uh, measures the complexity of the models and in the, in the small models, the degrees of freedom is proportional to the number of parameters. But this relationship breaks in large neural networks. The degrees of freedom is smaller than the number of parameters used in the uh, deep neural networks. So it means that some part of the deep neural networks are redundant, I think, is my opinion. So how to um, reduce such kind of uh, redundancy is an uh, important problem, I think. So, but we do not which part is redundant. So we need to some kind of inference procedure. So for such direction of studies, uh, I think the combination of sparse estimation and deep neural networks is important. Yes, I think, yes. Thank you. Any other quick questions for now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um, you mentioned the, the non-convex penalty to reconstruct the image. Um, I was wondering how computationally um, is it tractable? Is it, does, does it require way more computational resources to minimize it? How does that, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, um, non-convex penalty can sometimes uh, induce lots of uh, solutions. So with some kind of uh, multi-values in the energy landscape, so it's sometimes not tractable. But in some cases, uh, the problem can be solved with using some techniques that is uh, uh, available in non-convex problems. As in our problems, uh, we're uh, solving this uh, sparse estimation problem with the uh, functions uh, of the uh, squared error plus uh, non-convex function. So in total, this function sometimes uh, behaves like a uh, uh, convex function. Yes, so this squared error is important, I think. Yes, so uh, of course, uh, in some model settings, uh, there are many local minimums, but, uh, okay. In the parameter region over this line, 
we can solve this uh, problem with no convex penalty. This, this is our finding, yes. Thank you very much. And again, Ayaka will still be with us at lunch, so please do um, continue the conversation. I definitely want to have a conversation about half Tesla MRIs and how important this could be for, for maximising the speed um, of imaging in, for example, remote environments where you can't have a you know, kind of fixed MRI, you have portable MRI. So I think that could be really interesting. But let's just give both our speakers another great round of applause. Thank you.